Okay, we're in the Super Duty by Zenit. This is the, this is the Viking model of the airplane. Uh, you've seen it on pictures with the five-bladed propeller. We've never really shown you um, how to fly it uh, with the Viking 180 engine. So let's, let's do that today. Uh, basically, uh, this is Jan. I'm sitting in the plane right now. We've got no passenger just to make it easier for me to just kind of fly around and and film and uh, and talk about this. Um, what we're going to do is first start the engine. So obviously, the very similar procedure that other airplanes throttle to idle, get uh, the master switch on, and then uh, so we got dual batteries. So we got them both on for start here. Uh, <clears throat> get a fuel pump on. And since we're going to stay local, we just put them both on. We have very low amperage pumps going. Then I'd like to uh, just clear the area and start the engine. Clear. All right, so the engine is up and running. And just like any other airplane, we're going to, I'm going to wait a little bit and um, warm up just for a few seconds, and then we're going to taxi out. What I usually do is just leave the alternator off for a few seconds. As you can see, the uh, voltage is uh, telling us that. It's, uh, it's warning us that the alternator is off. So we're going to turn that on, and we immediately have now fuel pressure taking the space of the voltage. You can also see here on our radio that we're now charging at 14.3 volts. So all of our switches are on that we need for the flight. Uh, check, uh, Make sure our controls are loose and operational. We've modified the stick in our Super Duty, as you can see right here. Rather than coming up this way and your elbow coming back and hitting the seat, we put a joggle in the stick and it just makes it easier for us to be able to uh, pull and just feels a little bit more natural to have it further away from, uh, from the pilot. At least that's what I think. We don't have a lot of gauges in this plane, as you can see. It's quite open. Uh, we do have uh, just a couple up here. We've got your uh, altitude and uh, some airspeed. And uh, we do have, uh, it doesn't look like it, but we've got some fuel in each tank, about half an inch in each tank. And then we have uh, half an hour worth of fuel in the middle here. All right. We'll be taxiing out. Try not to hit any of these cars. That'll be good. This is a fun airplane. You get, uh, you know, you get kicked up off the ground a little bit. You sit kind of high because wheel, wheels are tall. You know, they're 31 inch wheels. And this little airport we're at, Massey, uh, is quite uh, quite busy. Looks like right now they're uh, putting the airplanes down on on the north runway. We're facing 36. We'll get our radio volume up. And let's talk to somebody. Our experimental, is there uh, anyone else in the pattern? I think it's just me, Matthew. All right, very cool. I just saw you depart, and uh, experimental is back taxing 3 6. Looking for traffic. I see traffic November four eight nine air turning crosswind from a three six. All right, so we've already checked controls. We did a pre-flight on the airplane. Everything's fine there. Let's see, uh, you know, uh, what we got for temperatures for takeoff. Sometimes when the sun shines a different way, you can't really see this LCD panel panel on the um, on the camera. But we'd like to get like 120 degrees uh, before departure, and we're at 113 now. The uh, view looks perfect to me, but the, the optics of filming it is a different story. Okay, let's uh, raise the flaps up so they're ready for departure. We got one on downwind. So what we're going to do is we're going to depart here in Florida on runway 36, and we're just going to head over to... To the beach, which is a, a right turn to the east, and then we'll uh, we'll kind of mimic and want to show you guys what the, everybody that was here for our 
engine workshop yesterday, what they got to see. Um, so we're going to do that. Let's uh, put some power to it and do the takeoff. All right, so we're going up. And we're just going to turn uh, eastbound. And we'll be at the ocean in no time at all. So right now we're uh, climbing out at 0.75 uh, bar, meaning about 8 pounds of boost. And the RPM is uh, 4,600. We're going to level off, so we're going to pull the power back to the half a bar. RPM is about 4,600 still. And a uh, half a bar of boost. Hill gauge is showing full. This is the intercoastal in Florida. A lot of flight training here, so we'll keep our eyes open. This is the home of Memory Riddle, uh, flight school, flight university. It's uh, New Smyrna Beach. We have a pretty nice area. We got some boat slips. We got a large area for fishing, and then the coast comes up after that. Usually after departure, you have to kick the brakes to stop those big wheels from from turning. That's usually Alyssa reminds me of doing that. She's not here today, but so it's just low power setting. You you get a uh, a speed around uh, 95, and then of course if you kick the RPM up 4,800, 4,900, 5,000, you go 100 miles an hour. But I'm actually going to reduce power even further because the point of this flight is uh, sightseeing. So we'll go down to like 4,300 RPM. That's plenty to stay airborne. And we'll be crossing over this little road here before we hit the water. All the hotels and the condos and everything are around here. Got a little sailboat out there. And let's hug the coast. They go right here. And the nice thing with this airplane is, as you see, I make put myself in the turn I look out the top window. It's a nice feature of this uh, this airplane. Of course, the Super Duty with the tall seats that we have from the from Lemke in Germany that made these that pops us up real high in the cockpit, so we have the ability to see over the wing really easily, which is really a nice feature. So right now we're just cruising at 85, and we're down to 4,400 RPM, just loafing around here. Sometimes you see some manta rays out here. Dark sharks are kind of hard to see, but we do live in the shark bite capital of the world, New Smyrna Beach, right behind us. Way out on the horizon there, I don't know if you can see it, but there's the, uh, the NASA building, the big giant building we're familiar with when, when the space shuttle was going up and down. And then to the left of that, it's a little hazy today. Normally you can clearly see the where the rockets go up for SpaceX. Now we got a little noise there on the on the radio. This uh, nice uh, stick we have here, the Y stick. Some people say uh, or feel when they choose or are in the market for a Zenit airplane that they can't get used to. They they want the stick to be ver you know horizontal, vertical, or they want a center stick. But it's actually quite uh, comfortable to have this little wide grip, and uh, it's easy easy to, to fly the airplane that way. As soon as we get a little bit further down here, we're going to be passing by the rest of these houses, and then we'll make a right turn, and uh, we'll head over the marsh where a lot of the fishermen are, uh, are doing their fishing. Let's make a right turn, and... Uh, and uh, over the marsh. This is a fairly famous, like I said, fishing area. Don't do a lot of fishing, but 
people come from all over to go here for that. As you can see up on the top window in the turn, you get a real good view. A very maneuverable airplane. Yeah, as far as like the maneuvering of this airplane, of course, uh, this isn't a, an aerobatic airplane, but it handles really, really well. So you could tip it around on the dime. Here's the Massey Airport where we live. Nice to have a Cessna 188 after Romeo 4 to the north, but over here, left dial in 36. Alright, so we got ourselves all set up for cleaning here. We'll put it on the grass in Massey. And so, power is back. going to put down some flaps so it gets out all the way down. There's no real like halfway and all the way. I just blow the airplane down and put the flaps in. It's very simple. We're going to beam the numbers here. And we're going to land on the grass runway, which is just a little field we have here. I like to do that with the tires, the same as the tires. Massey traffic, set the 7 o'clock, Romeo, Mitchell, left hour, 3 6, short approach, touch and go, Massey. And experimental is uh, turning the final for the grass runway. Okay, so we're on final for the grass runway. Here we are. And we're down. So I'll die. Well, that was the flight in the Super Duty with the 180. Of course, we also have a 195 horsepower into two now, which is very similar into uh, just a newer model by the Honda. Uh, 188 Echo Romeo, two to the north, uh, northwest, but over a left 45, 36. Let's go, man. Somebody had a little uh, incident with their tire here. Bring the flaps up. Nice Javik, Cessna 188, Echo Romeo, midfield, left dial, 36 short approach, touch and go, Messi. So here's where we were together yesterday for the gathering. And see all the seats. Messi, Javik, Cessna 7, Echo Romeo, left cross, 36, Messi. And the famous grill. Messi, Trappy, red page, Kayak, 180 kilo. Um, uh, so, um, the so three miles west of Massey, uh, 1,500, we can traffic advisory, Massey. All right, so enough of that. Turn them down.
And we're back home, throttle to idle. And then cut the ignition battery one and ignition battery two. And the engine will slow down and stop. Okay.